And uh, before I turn it over to uh, to uh, Elder Jake, what I like you to do is is to unmute and say Happy Sabbath to us. I want you everyone to unmute and say Happy Sabbath uh, to the to the team. Can we do that? Let's do it. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Perfect. I'm going to show you a uh, Spanish, a, a, a very short phrase in Spanish. And I want you to repeat it with me tonight, okay? That expression is, it, it has three words. So are you paying attention? Because you need to learn this tonight. Three words. The first word is te. Say. Sí. Te. 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 And then the second word is quiero. Quiero. Say the spelling. Te quiero. Te quiero. Te quiero. Te quiero. And then the last word is mucho. Much. Much. Yeah. <laughs> so te quiero mucho. Thank you, you very much. I love you a lot. Domingo, okay. will, will you say the spelling of, of the first two words? Yeah, T mean is T E. Yeah. Yeah. T like Tom. Yeah. E like Edward. Yeah. And then the second word is Q U yeah. E I. Huh? I. R O O. So that's te quiero. Te quiero mucho. And then mucho is much, and you just have to add it a O. Ah. So I want somebody to mute and tell me. Te quiero mucho. Te quiero mucho. Okay. Uh, I'm feeling better tonight. Somebody thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you so much for, 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 for coming and to making this uh, this meeting so wonderful. Let me uh, turn it over to Elder Jake. Jake, please take it from here. And thank you so much for joining us tonight, Elder Jake. Well, thank you, Elder Domingo, for a very nice opening. And, uh, and I'm so very pleased to see all of you here. Welcome to our 10 days of prayer. This is... Uh, day three and it's very simply entitled morning and evening and the scripture reading that's there is first chronicles 23 30 stand every morning to thank and praise the lord and likewise at evening so that's uh, the theme for this evening and uh, i understand that uh, matthew garen is doing double duty tonight that he's uh, going to be providing us with some music and he's going to be uh, praying for us when we come to uh, to prayer time. And uh, so uh, what I'd like to do is ask uh, Matt to uh, begin the prayer meeting with uh, a song. Are you prepared to do that, Matt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure am. Yeah, it's your end. Uh, everybody, then if everybody, if everybody mute, m mutes their microphones, and uh, if we go to number 306, Kim 306, mm -hmm. and I'm going to uh, also finish off with uh, number 306 is Draw Me Near, but then I'd like to, to just go right into Father Lead Me Day by Day as well. We'll, we'll just do the, let's just say, uh, I'll call out the verses to do the first and maybe third of Draw Me Near. And then we're going to go to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, hymn number 482, Lead Me Day by Day. Okay? <laughs> to the cross where thou hast died. 
Go with me to number 482. of your family and we just Lord ask for your leading by your precious Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Matt. That was just what we need at this time. Beautiful songs. Well done. So now we'd like to ask Anna if she's uh, ready to uh, do the readings for us. Uh, Anna Lawton will be doing that and I see your beautiful picture up there. So will you go ahead, Anna, please? Jesus, we want to start our days with you. Please do wake us up so we may enjoy communion in your presence. Help us to make this a daily habit and not to rush it or put it off. Help us to make you truly first and foremost in our thoughts each and every day. Amen. Thank and praise the Lord. Father, we are quick to bring you before you our various requests, complaints, and wishes, sometimes forgetting that you are a person, not a vending machine. Remind us of all the aspects of your character, all the small and big things you have done and are doing for us so we can thank and praise you for them. Right now, bring us to our mind reasons to praise you. Amen. Likewise, at evening, God, we not only desire to start our day with you, but to end it with you also. As we reflect upon the hours you gave us, may you bring to our minds the many times we have seen your faithfulness throughout the day. Let us fall asleep with praise in our lips, for you are everlasting Savior. Amen. Anna, thank you very much. Amen. That was outstanding. Praise God for our children in our church. We are, we are so fortunate to, uh, to have them all and to have them want to participate in our services and our events. Uh, I've uh, attended other 
denominations in the past. And uh, that's what drew me to the Victoria Seventh-day Adventist Church when I started looking for uh, an Adventist church where the wonderful children that I saw the first Sabbath I attended. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, for some reason or other, uh, when I started preparing for the for uh, this uh, night in prayer, my mind went back to 1951. In 1951, my mother died. She was 36 and I was 15. And, uh, you know, uh, up until she died, uh, we used to go to mass every Sunday. Uh, I prayed every day uh, as a teenager. Uh, uh, I would recite the Lord's Prayer and uh, Hail Mary and the Apostles' Creed. And, uh, but you know, after my mother died, I didn't go to church for 49 years except for weddings and funerals. Uh, I didn't pray at all except when I was in trouble and uh, which was quite often. And, uh, but uh, then in the year 2000, my situation changed and I started going to church. And, you know, I realized after a while that I didn't know how to pray. You know, and a lot of people don't know how to pray. I mean, they're, they're, what is the proper way to pray? I mean, is it best to pray standing up or sitting down, kneeling or uh, bowing down? Should our uh, hands be open or closed or lifted up to God? Do our eyes need to be uh, closed uh, when we pray? Is it better to pray in a church building or out in nature? Should we pray in the morning or should we... Uh, get up uh, or, or at night or should we when we go to bed are there certain words we need to say in our prayers how do we begin our prayers what is the proper way to uh, close a prayer you know these questions are asked by a lot of people and uh, uh, like do any of the things that I've just mentioned matter at all well you know, just what is, so what is the proper way to pray? Well, Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us to pray without being anxious, to pray about everything and to pray with thankful hearts. God will answer all such prayers with the gift of his peace in our hearts. The proper way to pray is to pour out our hearts to God, being honest and open with God. You know, he already knows uh, more about us than we know about ourselves. We are to present our request to God, keeping in mind that God knows what is best and will not grant a request that is not his will. That's important for us to remember that God will not grant a request that is not his will for us. We are to express our love, gratitude, and worship to God in prayer without worrying about having just the right words to say. God is more interested in the contents of our hearts than the eloquence of our words. The closest that the Bible comes to giving a pattern for prayer, of course, is the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13. Now, what we have to understand is that the Lord's Prayer is not a prayer that we memorize and recite to God like I used to do when I was a teenager. It's an example of the things we should go, that we should go into a prayer. Things like worship, trust in God, requests, confession, and submission. We are to pray for the things the Lord's Prayer talks about using our own words and customizing it to, for our own journey with God. The proper way to pray is to express our hearts to God. Sitting, standing, kneeling, hands open or closed, eyes open or closed, at church, at home, in nature. Well, God's more interested in the content of our hearts 
than our body position and the sequence of our words. So uh, I would be very interested if uh, any of you would share with us your uh, how you pray. I'm just you know taking into consideration what I've just said. Uh, uh, I would, uh, and I'm sure others would like to know just what your uh, just how you pray to God. So is anybody. Uh, willing to uh, give us an an example of how to pray? Uh, if some people are just maybe too shy to speak, it's a you know very personal, but very powerful question. And I have to say that when I was growing up, the first uh, kind of confrontation with legalism in the church was when we had some individuals who were insisting that we have to stand in church when we pray. And uh, and as a as a child, I knew that there was something wrong with that. And it was my father. Thank God for my father. I think he was gifted with very balanced approach to ministry. He would explain to me, Marion. You know, prayer is like is like when uh, you know NASA communicates with uh, astronauts at this you know space station, and the astronauts sometimes they are. They communicate with NASA continuously with the, you know, with the home base. Uh, they can be upside down. They can be, you know, laying down, but they are all constantly speaking. You know, Houston, we have a problem. That's a famous phrase, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so <clears throat> my father gave me a testimony that changed my life because my father said, Mary and I pray even as I drive. I speak to God even as I drive because we did a lot of driving as a pastor. And I do the same thing. Every time I go to visit somebody, um, you know, I pray as I drive. I pray as I read sometimes. I sometimes uh, in a prayerful, you know, meditative kind of connection with God, just literally speaking to him. Uh, even sometimes while I'm sitting in church and listening, this is in addition to, you know, the prayer that the Bible says is avail as much as when you go into your inner room. Um, at the same time, prayer is continuous communication. And I know Daniel prayed three times a day. Uh, that special prayer in the inner closet or, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. But I also learned from my father to pray continuously, you know. Whether I walk, sit down, uh, I'm in the middle of something. Just like the astronauts with uh, their home base. Elder Jake, that's a good question. I didn't even... Think about it until this moment, <laughs> until you ask. Uh, in the morning, I normally kneel, not because it's the proper way to, to pray or anything like that, just because I feel comfortable doing it that way. Every morning when I pray with my wife, uh, we kneel. Um, however, for some reason, I pray a lot in my bed, meaning I woke up in the middle of the night and I... I pray, I, and I, I, I tend to be a longer prayer than other prayers for some reason. I woke up in the middle of the night and I remember my children or remember someone at church that needs prayer or even myself or, um, uh, or, or an event or anything. I ended up having a long prayer uh, for, just from my bed, just laying down. I'm not getting up to, to stand up or to kneel or anything. I ended up doing that a lot, and I really hope that this is acceptable to God, because I feel like I'm talking to God when I'm doing it. And yeah, we pray for, a lot. we try to pray, to praise Lord more than asking him for something. Not every time is successful, but we try to praise God for, you know, for everything that he has given us, you know, help, family, and church, and so many things. And then go through, you know, to for petitions. We're trying to make the petition shorter, but sometimes it just it's just not feasible. We have so much things to ask God, and we ended up asking God so many things at the same time. So that's that's my story, Elder Jake. Thank you, uh, Elder Domingo. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm starting now, after joining this church, to uh, understand what it means to pray always. Uh, uh, and that doesn't mean, of course, that 
you're not, it, that's all you're doing is praying. It just means that uh, when the opportunity arises during the day uh, to do that, and I'm starting to learn to do that. Uh, generally, I start my morning doing devotionals uh, you know, in front of my computer. And, and uh, I have uh, three Bible reading plans that I do Bible readings in a year and uh, uh, Ellen White uh, devotional and a few others and uh, and prayer. Uh, at night, I kneel uh, generally beside my bed, but uh, sometimes depending on where my wife is situated, I'll go in the office and close the door and uh, and pray. But I, I do, I do want to be alone, and uh, and so uh, uh, yeah, prayer is something that you have to work at. That's what I found, and uh, uh, I was without prayer for so long in my life that uh, I got a late start on learning it. So I'm still in the process. Anyone else uh, care to share? Um, this is Marilyn. Right. Um, I, I, I'm the same as you. I've just learned how to pray. Well, I haven't learned how to pray, but I'm learning how to pray, I should say. And in the mornings when I get up, I, I think of, I think of uh, God as my friend. And if I can think that way, then I can have a conversation. It seems like a one-way conversation, but you know what? It isn't because the answers come through, you know, throughout the day. And when things happen that are good, I, I stop and, and thank him when um, just throughout the day. Yeah, it, it's just a whole learning process. I thought that there were a lot of things that had to be included, but um, I think that everybody has their personal way of, of speaking to God and talking to him and thanking him and and praising him and um i i think it's one of the most uh, valuable things that i've ever learned in my life That's... Amen. thank you Marilyn, for that i know that most days i wake up and i i usually wake up with the song in my heart already and I don't know whether it's, uh, I don't think it's just because I am a musician and that's so much, it's music and uh, and the words and everything are so beautiful, especially in Psalms, these are the songs that usually come to my heart. And so, you know, as I'm starting off my morning, usually my wife is in bed, it's, I have it to my the house to myself, but I don't wanna to make too much noise, I don't, but I'll be singing a song and the Lord will start to, I'm, the words of the song, I'll, Sometimes I'll stop and have the meditation that I'm singing. You know, I'll think about that. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit starts to speak to me. And I usually sit down. And then at that point, I usually open my Bible. And uh, then, you know, I don't try to bite off a lot of word. I just want to find where the Holy Spirit is leading. And then next thing you know, uh, I'm reading that word. And I'm praying that word for myself you know, especially, but I really feel that um, one thing I, I lack in my own life, although there's always a song of praise there, and all during the day I pray, I ask God for direction, and, um, but, you know, the book ending, I think this is important that, you know, that, you know, that we begin to tell of his loving, his faithfulness in the morning and his goodness at night, you know, to remember the evening, the evening, uh, prayer and sacrifice and remembrance as well as the morning so that's that's my testimony he i really seek him in the morning and i and uh and i know i'm i'm praising him and praying all day long but uh yeah and i definitely read my read the word every night so i guess uh we try to keep praying that word back to the lord thank you matt that's uh inspirational with a beautiful way to start today i just I just want to share with you, like uh, Agnes and I have been walking three times a week, um, like Mon like Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday, for um, and we do 10k walk at Beaver Lake. And before we we do our visiting or talking, we sing 
a praise song before we do our walk, which is really nice. And he has started, Agnes has started it since we've been walking for a long time. And it's a nice way of uh, first thing in the morning, being so thankful for uh, we are given the opportunity to go for a walk, enjoy the nature, get some fresh air. And um, so we start our walk with a praise song, or it's like a prayer song. It's called Lord in the Morning. You know, it's really nice. Life with God. A reading of 1 Chronicles 23 reveals that God commanded the Levites, those who cared for the ancient Jewish temple and its services, to stand in his presence, lifting their voices in thanksgiving and praise to him every morning and every evening. This devotional exercise original in another imperative that God gave Moses when he asked the Israelites to make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Exodus 25 verse 8, God further enjoyed one lamb you shall offer in the morning and other lamb you shall offer at twilight. Exodus 29 verse 39. Well, I think that we uh, should be starting our uh, our prayers now. Uh, this is a prayer meeting. So uh, I, I wonder if you could put your prayer, uh, prayer requests in the chat. It's a lot easier if we, uh, if we list them in the chat and it's easier for Matt to uh, pick them up and uh, mention them in his prayer for us. So could you just put your uh, prayer requests in chat, please? Pray for our children that uh, I always ask God, Lord, if you make us busy outside, please be busy in our inside <laughs> home, our children. So that my auntie feels better because her, her she had eye surgery, but and she can't really see out of one eye. Amen, we'll pray for, for your auntie. And we remember yeah. your auntie. She was just with us not too long ago, worshiping here for a few Sabbaths. Yeah, as so we join our hearts together tonight, where we have a, a varied, a very diverse mm -hmm. <laughs> list of petitions, that's for sure. Let's just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord, because we know that your ear is open to our, our prayers and our cries. We thank you, Lord, that that we have breath, that you lead us and guide us from the from the very beginning of our lives, from the beginning of our days, even to the, the time that we lay our head to rest, you are there. And Lord, thank you that you watch over. And even as we've made uh, these things known tonight, each one of us, we, there are so many things here. Lord, we just look at this list and we think of our children, God, and the promise is that you said that you will turn our children, the hearts of the children, back to the, the, the fathers, Lord. And Lord, we pray for Louisa tonight, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will intervene. Lord, that uh, you will send laborers across the path of our children. <laughs> Lord, it's not just going to be our voices and examples, but they're going to be convicted by what they see and hear in the, in the marketplace, Lord, in the places with their friends. They're going to hear stories, even as we've heard testimonies of how you've moved to people to, to all of a sudden realize the truth and turn their lives even as our brother Jacob has saved and said tonight, uh, Lord, if you turn our hearts to you and we pray our children, Lord, will be kept safe until the time and even during the time that you bring them back, Lord, into your kingdom. Keep them safe out there, Lord, we pray. We pray for our friend, Lord. We pray for Connie, Nadine's friend. Thank you, Lord, for friendship and uh, that, uh, that can bind us together to be helpful in times of need here. Yes. Lord, uh, think about uh, a friend, Denise, Lord, that uh, has also been mentioned to me. 
that uh, Lord, if we thank you, Lord, that you said in your word, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, Lord, for they will be filled, the needs will be filled, Lord, because of our sister's faithfulness and others around that will plant, that will water, Lord, and, and reap. And bring her into your kingdom, Lord. Show her, Lord, that you are watching over your word to perform it in her life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing power, God. We really ask for that tonight. We know Michael Lawton needs your healing touch on him, Lord. And we thank you for, Lord, even as you've preserved his life and brought him brought him and kept him over for these years. But God, we pray that you would uh, just reestablish and regenerate those organs in him, Lord. Bring bring um, life to him in every way. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that he, you would prosper in spirit, soul, and body and be in good health in every way, Lord, that he'd be able to be a father to his children and uh, be faithful, Lord, in every way to the calling that you've made and brought into his life. Anna's auntie had the surgery in her eye, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, that uh, for her, that she, for the family relationship, Lord. And uh, thank you, Lord, that you are going to continue to do that healing in Anna's auntie's eye. Lord, uh, we pray, Lord, that you take away any pain or discomfort there. And uh, yes. that you would put your healing hand there, Lord, and, and continue to guide her and keep their hearts together in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for parents. Thank you, Lord, that Glennis can be there for her dad, Raymond. And Lord, that uh, even as he, uh, he's got family to touch bases with and to, and to talk about his needs, Lord, this, this is a burden, a place of, of safety for him. Lord, please open a door where he can go in and uh, be safe. And uh, Lord, receive the care or aid that he might need. And especially right now, Lord, we pray that you would put your healing hand upon him and for the damage that's just been recently done. And heal him, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're thinking, and as we think about that, Lord, thank you for preserving Ed from that rear render, Lord, that he didn't get whiplash or anything serious out of it. Thank you, Lord, that Ed's with us tonight and in good health. Lord, you put your angels around us. Lord, they're there to guide us and to keep us safe. And I believe you did that for Ed tonight as you have done it for us as well. For my family, for my daughter, Lord, you preserved her life in those accidents she's been in. Thank you for your angels being there and count about those that fear your name. Lord, we thank you for the, for the way that your church moves. It moves your church's people, Lord. It's not buildings. Uh, it's not plants. It's people. Lord, and you have planted people in your word and they are flourishing and they want to see a vision grow, Lord, that where more and more people can come and assemble themselves together in peace and safety, Lord, and where your name would be magnified. And so I pray, we pray tonight for the plans that uh, are coming before the church in Victoria tonight. Lord, where adjustments need to be made, let hearts be open to them. Uh, Lord, let people be creative from your word, Lord, you give them the ideas of what needs to be where. Lord, let there be a good consensus because Lord, it's your building. None of us takes ownership except as we contribute to your work. And Lord, you are the one that owns all things. So Lord, give us direction. And Lord, let there be a peace about it and excitement about it, the vision that you have, not only for the church people of Victoria, but also Lord, for the ministries they support, like the LCS, Lakeview Christian School. Lord, we pray for the staff there, the leadership there, that you will continue to turn their hearts to you, that they would be doors that are lifted up, heavenly gates lifted up, that the King of Glory comes through them in the morning and they do their devotions when they when they ask you how to lead and to teach and to guide their teachers, their students, Lord. Be with them and empower them by your spirit, Lord. Show them that you are real there. Oh God, we pray, thank you for the innocence in the children there. And we pray, God, that you would preserve that innocence and the virtue in our school in every respect, Lord, that uh, obedience to you would be uh, something that we would just take for granted. And Lord, that every spirit of rebellion would be put down. And Lord, that the uh, anointing of your spirit would be there and run over 
for all of our, our friends and our students, Lord, in that, in that wonderful school. We thank you, Lord, for listening to us, hearing our cry, Lord, watching over your word to perform it over all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Matt. So let's, uh, let's just take one minute for a private confession and to thank God for his forgiveness. Father, for your mercy. I think we all, let's sing, open my eyes, Lord. And uh, again, everybody will have to turn there. Unfortunately, I'd love to hear everybody sing it, but you have to turn your mics off at this. Open my eyes. Lord, we exalt you this night. Lord, we thank you again that we can gather around the feast that your word brings us, Lord, and, and, and exalt you in the hope that you have given us. Oh, in a rebirth and the power of your resurrection and the great expectation of your soon coming. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us, Lord. Thank you for your, the rest that you promise us. And uh, Lord, for each one, we pray Lord, a sweet sleep tonight. And Lord, perhaps a dream or a vision that comes from you that inspire us with a new song in the morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much, Anna. Safe yeah. travels. Thank you, Anna. That was excellent reading. Yeah.
safe travel between your computer and your bed.